Hey guys, welcome back from Classic Work. Got another good one for y'all today. Now, some of y'all may know, some of y'all may not know, I am not a fan of Kubota tractors. But, whatever you get, so what you gotta work on. So, what do we got going on today? <clears throat> Where do I even start? This is a pretty bad botch somebody tried to fix. Uh, I don't know exactly what happened, but you can tell they cut the rim out here and then re-welded it back in there, but they welded it crooked. If you can tell there, there's gap there that shouldn't be there and mismatched bolts and spacers and a whole bunch of mess. So our job is they've actually, we got another rim and tire for it that we're going to put on, but we got to fix all these bolt holes that they've done screwed up. So we got to get the tire off of here and take a look at it and see how bad it really is. So without any further ado, let's get after it and let's get started. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not harping on the guy who ever fixed this to say that he did a bad job or anything. You know, we've all done stuff when we're in a hurry and the job's got to get done and whatnot, but just by looking at the welds here, the welds don't look bad. So it makes me believe that whoever did this knew what they were doing. So. joys of being me. Ugh. Mm. Okay, we're looking at the rim here. I see what they tried to do when they fixed it, or so-called fixed it the first time. This piece right here that they put in, you can tell this broke out up here in this top corner. And they put this piece in here that they made from something else. You can tell that this hole right here is not the right size. So they made it from something. And they were just trying to get by, and I understand that. I got no beef with anybody that does that. But this is the bad news. Man, these holes here. A lot of every one of the threads is boogered up and the worst part of it is these two are stripped out so if you can see there there's absolutely no thread there the first half inch of the hole so that's going to be a chore some of these i think can be cleaned up this one can be chased that one can be chased this one i think can be chased and that one can too but uh yeah these two holes are are cattle pretty much so and then we got two holes here that still got bolts in them. This one right here, I don't think will be too bad to get out. This one's got a dead gum ease out in it, so that's going to be a lot of fun to get out. Um, I, I'm going to tell y'all something. Ease outs work at work about one percent of the time. If it is not that stuck, an ease out will get it, but more than likely you will break them off in there every single time. So please, whatever y'all do, stop using ease outs. They don't work most of the time. So I'm gonna show y'all a technique how to get these out that works pretty much 95 to 98% of the time. It is a surefire way to get a bolt out. There's a couple of techniques I'll show you and maybe in one day it'll help y'all out in the long run. Dang, and barrel scared me. All right, anyways, may have to come up with something new to fix these two holes. I may have to get the mag drill out and do a bunch of uh, hooting and hollering and whatnot. The good thing is this is steel, so uh, that's good and bad in the same breath. Uh, steel's good. It's excellent that we can we can make a uh, sleeve to put in these. But the bad news is you can also weld something to it by accident. I'm saying so. <laughs> got to be careful when fooling with steel so let's get everything set up and get after it I 
Okay, to give yourself the best possible chance of success on doing it this way, heat the bolts that are stuck. Now, that may not be always be an option. A lot of times it's in something that's very, very thin and you don't want to burn the paint off of it, you don't want to melt something else right next to it. But we have the option here, so we're going we're gonna to take it. A lot of times, and I made a previous video on this before, I'll preheat with the welding rod. So you'll strike up on your surface, let it, you know, build up a little bit, stop, strike up, build up, stop. Keep doing that a couple of times, it'll put heat into, into here and make it expand. So I'm just going to take a torch real quick and heat this up. And it doesn't take much, but a little bit helps a lot. Let them cool down for a little bit. While you're letting it cool, go ahead and get you some stuff prepped up. Now, a lot of guys out there like to use nuts and washers to weld to them. Personally, I like using bolts. The biggest reason is bolts are much more high quality, they're easier to weld to, and the biggest benefit is you can reuse them. This bolt right here is probably pulled out uh, probably 15 plus broke off bolts and uh, I still use it. Just cut them off, reuse it. It's pretty awesome. This one here has done the same, probably the same amount. Now, the type of bolt that you get has a lot to do with how well that they'll pull out. This right here is a rod bolt out of a uh, 1066 International tractor. It's a grade 8 bolt. Very, very high quality steel. Very easy to weld to and it's got a low chance of breaking. So, they're awesome for this type of deal here. So, got the welder and everything set up. We'll get ready to tack. All right, get ready to tack on. So, my preferred rod to use for this is actually 6011. This is a great rod. This is a good time to use your stubs too. 6011, they don't stick very well to cast, which that's not gonna help us because this is on steel. So just be real careful where you aim. Right now, I think I'm running around 85 amps. This is a 330 second rod. So good hot burn in, if that's what you're wanting. So 611's real good at tacking. That's, uh, that's what they're great at. So fit this one up real quick. Give it a few quick tacks. First tack, try to get it as straight as you can. And then, if you can, if you can only get to it in certain places, you can see we can get around this pretty easy. If you can only get to it in just a few places, be sure you get three tacks on it. You know, roughly 120 degrees apart from each other. So, but we can weld this one all the way around. So that's what we're gonna do. After you get done welding, get you a hammer and tap the end of that bolt. That has been known to help a lot, believe it or not. Let it cool a little bit and we'll see if we can extract it. Now, it's really, really tough to try to break one by hand, so get you some kind of pneumatic device, either an impact or something. That, that 
that jarring is what's gonna kind of bring it out. So I've learned electric impacts don't work as good as air. Air is the way to go. But we're gonna give it an attempt to see if it'll work. You can see it already immediately turned. It means we got it. So work it back and forth, forward and reverse. It gets a little tough. Go back and forward. Like that. Oh, see we broke our weld. I got a little too ambitious with it. Alright, no big deal. Just weld it back on. We may have to switch to a 7018 now if it ain't wanting to hold. Tack it back on. Repeat the process. Another good little smack. Now I'm going to chase this one with 7018. 6011 is real good, but they're brittle. So it helps to have a little ductility in there, and that's where 7018 comes in. Once again, 330 seconds, same amps. Another good smack. Try again. Sugar go to air. This electric impact ain't getting it. We tried. Uh, my surefire method backfired on me. Now, I got the other one out second attempt, which that's about average. If it takes you more than about five or six attempts, then you may want to try to throw in the towel because you might get it, you might not at that point. I think what happened on this one was, y'all saw me, I had it working back and forth, but it had one little hard spot in it, I just couldn't get past it. And I think the biggest reason is that these holes, they go all the way through. And whoever worked on it last time tried a bunch of junk on the back. I don't know why they did that. I cut a big old blob of nothing off on the back. And I think that had something to do why this one wouldn't come out. So I tried just kind of grazing it and everything from the back, but something up there is folded up, so I, I can't get it out with my method. So I'm going to show you all a method that most of y'all have probably seen and, and probably have done, which is drill it out. So I'll give you a couple of pro tips about this. 
one thing is I don't like doing this. It, it takes a lot of time, and if you mess up, you mess up big time. Whereas in welding, uh, very little that you can mess up, you know, unless you weld it to the to the wrong plate. So get you a center punch and center punch your hole in the middle. Get as close as you can so you got less work. Looks pretty good right there. Got a good mark. Nice beefy mark. Okay. Alright, it dulled my my center punch so that I mean welding on it and put hardness into it. Get you a good sharp center drill like this one here. We're going to test the waters on it. If it doesn't drill, we'll have to anneal it. Let's see if it'll even cut. Oh yeah, we're getting somewhere. That's good. Uh, put yourself a little oil on your center drill. Help lubricate it a little bit. The joker's hard though, I will give it that. Ooh, slipped on me. Notice has walked on me now, so we're gonna have to be really careful. It's probably pushing out a kind of an obtuse angle. Stop right there, grab you a good sharp bit. Doesn't matter what size at this point. I don't even know what that one is. That's a quarter. Let's go down. Use one of your odd size drill bits, one you don't use very often, that way you know it's good and sharp. Let's see if she'll go through it. Woo, that's loud. Oh, I'll fix that. I'm just gonna clamp a pair of vice grips on this rim up here. That way the echo is not so bad. Put on some hearing protection. Alright, we've hit a hard spot. So, what I've got to do is take torch and heat up the back side and let it cool really slowly to anneal it. I'm going to do that real quick. Okay, it's cooled off a little bit, a good bit. Can't quite touch it, but we're going to see if we can drill through it now. Ooh. I don't know if y'all heard that. That's a sign that's, that it's harder than it was before, and that is not good. seen as well as I did. It threw chips there for a second. Let's try the three eighths again. I'm not getting anything out of it. Okay guys, I'm getting tired of this. Apparently that bolt is not wanting to anneal. So, you gotta go to plan B, which is 
a masonry bit. This is a carbide brazed on or soldered onto the end. And that will go through that. You can buy these just about anywhere. This is what you get broke taps out with. Just be sure you don't get them too hot because that solder will, will come off of them. Headway, it sure don't look like it. I may have to go sharpen that real quick. Do that, it'll still be cooling off a little bit. Alright, I'm gonna go sharpen this bit. Now, the trick with uh, carbide is you can't sharpen it with a regular grinding rock, you gotta have a silicon carbide wheel in order to sharpen them. So, to give you an idea what it looks like, I'll be back in just a minute and show you what it looks like then. Okay. That's what it looks like now. So let's try it and see. Pretty good chip there for a minute. Yeah, it's not hot, so keep going. Feels like I ain't cutting anymore, but it's, it's still going. size. Whew, that jerk got a little warm. Uh, let's see what I got in my set here. Looks like we got a, what is this? Three-eighths. Alright. Let's go ahead and drop it and break it. I'm going to go sharpen it once again because I don't think that's going to cut it. And then we'll we'll try for that piece. Alright, got her good, good and sharp now. See if we can drill through there. We'll put it in low range. I'm giving her all she's got, Captain. Chipped it. Oh man. Okay, it's made it through. We broke our bit. Chipped it on both corners. I'll let you look and see. They chipped it right there. Yeah, carbide doesn't like an interrupted cut. I imagine it didn't hit hard at all and it broke. We're through all the way to the other side. I just had to knock it out or something. Alright. Now guys, we got some options we need to talk about. Okay, 
there's a couple things you can do now. You can try to get you a center punch in there and see if you can't break this thin web right here. Okay, and we really can't go to another size because we're, we're going to hit our threads if we keep drilling. Because my, my bit walked. If it would have went to center, we could have went to another size. But uh, I don't think that's an option now. I'm going to see if this web will break right here. It may not. More than likely it's not. Nah, it's tearing it. Yeah. So that's not going to work. Okay. We can try our method of welding the bolt back on here. We got all this extra room in here now. You know, you got more likely a chance for expansion and contraction, but we'll, I think we'll run into the same problem as we had before. So, what do you do? Well, I'm going to show you a technique that you've got to be really good in order to get it right. You gotta you gotta watch your colors and really pay attention. I'm gonna torch this out of here without harming the threads. It's it's tricky to do it, but uh, I'll walk you through the steps and uh, I'll either succeed or fail. So let's try it. All right. Now you may be asking yourself. Why didn't you just torch it out to begin with? Or, are you still working on that same bolt? Or, this guy's channel is still going? Anyways, no matter what you're asking is, the reason that I couldn't torch it out before, if I tried to torch it as thick as this piece is, it that the oxygen and everything burning out would have just blown back on me and more than likely would have run the threads. But now that since we've got a hole all the way through here now, you know, we can make it go through the other side and have a pretty good chance of it working. So, uh, we're going to get the torch lit up right here. And before we go any further, I'm going to tell you a couple things to look for if you're going to do this yourself. Heat up only the material that you're going to cut. So you'll heat it up till you get, you know, your nice orange temperature. Pull the torch away let it cool for a split second. That way that this outside material here has time to cool as well. That way that you, when you light up, you won't hit this material. It'll be, it'll be colder than the material that you're cutting. Metal has a funny way of, if it's got a gap in it or air in between it, it won't cut it. That's the great thing about a settling torch. And, uh, if I do everything right, I won't hit the threads. I might booger them up a little bit, but it, it won't be to the extreme that you would with a drill bit. So let's try it. We're either going to succeed or fail, like I said before. Mm. Let's give this a shot. So on your heat, you don't want a huge flame. You ain't trying to cut a big, thick piece of plate. Pretty as I hope, but 
I think we can make that do. Threads are still showing. All I gotta do is get in there and pick some of that crap out of there. That old draw ain't easy to cut through. Oh, hope my head wasn't in there too much. All right, there you go. Sorry if you can't see real closely up in there. Excuse me. There's still a good bit of little dross there in the uh, in the threads. Take your hammer and give it a good little snap on the side. A lot of it'll fall out. Ooh, that's loud. A lot of times that stuff will just jump out of there. This one being fine thread, eh, it's not wanting to cooperate too well. Anyways, you may have to run up in there with a drill bit and kind of clean some of the debris out that's still there and then you'll be able to run a tap through there. And uh, Bob's your uncle. That was one of the hardest bolts I've ever seen. It still ain't giving up. Years ago, my dad told me back when he was in diesel school back in the 70s, and uh, his old uh, diesel instructor told him a good mechanic might give in, but they never give up. So, perseverance helps a lot sometimes. This ain't been a bad job, it's just it was a tough one. Tell you what, I have to give it to him. These bolts and nuts and studs are pretty good. Yeah, I know somebody's asking me, probably. They've seen the sun go down pretty much, it's taking me all day to fix this one job. Now, how come you just didn't buy another axle and put it in there? Well, a couple of reasons. One, in the great scheme of things, well, one, it was a lot cheaper to do it this way for the customer. Maybe, maybe not been the, well, yeah, it was economical because We'd have to tore it down. That would have taken me just as long to tear it all the way down. And then we'd have to get a new axle, which would take a couple of days at least. And uh, this is the bolt we had such trouble with. Let's see how easy it goes in. Can't have something better than that. Anyways. It would have taken a couple of days to get the part. They may have got the part wrong, so might have had to wait an extra couple of days. And then we'd have to have new seals, new gaskets, and all that jazz to put it back together. So in the long run, even if you overnighted stuff and cost out the wazoo to get all that stuff shipped, you know, this is much better than spending a day <laughs> trying to get one bolt out. Uh, it's not always in the cards to do what makes sense.
done got dark on us. <laughs> we got her done though. Not a moment too soon either. But it looks real good. It looks real sharp now. Everything's nice and tight on it. All the studs went in good. I wound up having to tack one of the studs because I didn't trust it. And it went in a little too easy, if you know what I mean. But yeah, proud of it. That was a good job.